Scrifflicious. Did you ever watch the movie Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt? If not, I won't spoil it for you, but instead, just sort of go over the general plot of the film. The main premise is that Earth is being invaded by a super advanced alien race and through a series of unfortunate events, Cage, played by Tom Cruise, comes in contact with some alien blood that puts him into a time loop, reliving the same day over and over each time he dies. What this culminates into is Cage being able to get further and further into the battle before dying and having to start all over again. If this sounds familiar, it's because this is literally the base mechanic of every video game ever. So what does this have to do with PUBG? Well, the main point here is failure. Each time Cage died, he was able to learn from that death, avoid it the next time around, and continue further on down his path. If you're sitting there thinking to yourself, Griff, I get how this is analogous to PUBG, but I don't feel like Edge of Tomorrow is a proper comparison since PUBG is totally random and has different loot and play zones each time. Okay, fair enough. In that respect, it isn't a perfect one-to-one -one analogy, but what it is is a reference point for this video's topic. Which, at the end of, if you still don't like my choice of Edge of Tomorrow, then feel free to insert Groundhog's Day if it makes you feel better. Since the first time I jumped out of the plane, I've let this game kick my ass six ways to Sunday and continue to come back for seconds. Mostly because I enjoy a fun challenge from time to time, but also because I felt that what kept me from winning a particular fight was typically a relatively small mistake that taught me what not to do in the future. Prime example, I remember the first time I landed school on Erangel long before I knew what guns were what and how to loot fast without dying. The lesson there was that I needed to learn how to properly swim before I could dive straight into the deep end. So I tried to find the most remote places possible and just spent several minutes trying to pick up loot as fast as I could. After that, I tried finding places that would attract at least one or two other players and see if I could survive those types of drops. Before too long, I was able to land at school or Hacienda and walk out alive. So what changed between my first games and where I'm at now? Well, the first inherent advantage I have now versus then is a confidence in my ability to loot and kill people. Sure, I'm no professional, but I've put myself in enough of these situations to know that I'm capable of coming out on top, even when I don't. Most importantly though, I've learned what not to do when it comes to getting into fights or making certain moves. This is why you'll hear a lot of other players or streamers say that your deaths in PUBG are some of your greatest teachers. And I can certainly attest to this. Maybe it's just me, but in the games where I do manage to win, there is this odd sort of feeling where things just happen to work out from time to time and you don't really feel like you did anything particularly different than how you normally would do them. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? I mean, that's true sometimes, but if you were to run that same game back and change one or two variables, then the outcome might have been completely different. Just because you weren't challenged or punished in any way for your choices during a win, that doesn't mean that all the moves you made were good. Let me explain what I mean. If you were running through an open field with no cover and get into a gunfight with another player, by all accounts, if the other player is competent enough to kill you, then he should send your sorry no cover have an ass back to the lobby and not bat an eye doing so. But if he whiffs a few shots and doesn't make any attempt to protect himself either and you win the fight, then you get to strut into the next circle without consequence, leading you to feel like the choice you made to run through that open field was a justified call. When in reality, it wasn't a necessarily good move in the first place, you just had a more fortunate outcome. I think a problem a lot of us face as gamers is that we've played far too many games where we see what the objective is and make our attempts to get through the obstacle. So when we fail, we make these little minor alterations to our actions in order to advance to the next area of the game. Sometimes that happens to be all that's required, but other times it takes figuring out that our entire approach itself is flawed and we have to change our actions completely. In the case of PUBG, you're not really afforded the luxury of retrying the same scenario over and over again until you get it right like you would if you were playing, say, Halo or Super Mario Bros. Sure, you may run into several situations that mimic or straight up mirror previous engagements you've been faced with, but the challenge comes in the way of every outcome deciding variable being completely random. The players you face may do similar things, but can't be counted on making the same moves as one another. Likewise, their loot and your loot is going to be completely different from match to match, so you can't really anticipate being more or less prepared for a fight than they are. Okay, so if everything is random and nothing is 100% predictable, then how do you learn from failures without certainty you'll succeed in the future? This is kind of the million dollar question. While no, you can't predict outcomes, you can prepare yourself as much as possible to better your odds. I know I've used the blackjack analogy before, but it also applies to this train of thinking in the sense that you can't know what the dealer is holding. You can only make choices based on the information you do have. Sometimes that means you play against the house and double down with a strong hand. Other times, 
you may gamble the house and they take all your shit. But unlike blackjack, you have another option which is to avoid the fight until you're better prepared and work to put the odds back into your favor. It's super important to look at the things that get you killed. If you start to notice patterns in your gameplay that get you killed, then it's worth taking the time to see what other factors contribute to those deaths and ask yourself, was that death avoidable? If you're always getting shot in the back by a third party while you're trying to kill someone else, then the problem isn't that you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, it's that you're taking fights without first establishing a safe position and need to be more aware of your surroundings. If you're dying to players sitting in a corner of a house because they heard you running up to it and knew to sit still as to not alert you of their presence, then perhaps you need to start assuming every building you go into is occupied and try to avoid making a lot of noise or being caught off guard. But also, f*** that guy for choosing to play the game differently than you. You should make fun of his stupid face and his dumb looking dog, I don't know, probably his mom should be worked into the insults at some point, I, whatever you need to say to get the point across that you're upset with him outplaying you, like, you know, that'll teach him.